Hi everyone, Dr. Matt here, and in this video we're going to look at the different cancer diagnostic investigations. So firstly we're going to look at the generic approaches that we can take to diagnose cancer, and then we're going to focus down onto three, these three cancers, which are the most common cancers in the developed world that lead to death. So firstly, let's just quickly look at these different approaches that we can take to diagnosing cancer. Over here, we've got the patient history. So this would be certain things like the personal history of the patient, so their age, their sex, the medical history, so their past medical history. This would be looking at certain things like surgery or already having a history of cancer. The family history, the real strong one here would be, does the family have any history of cancers? Social history, so this would be things like drinking history, smoking history, exercise, looking at any kind of risk factors that would be associated with cancer, and then symptoms. What are they presenting with or what have they been persisting with in terms of symptomology? So the common symptoms that would go with cancer would be unexplained uh, weight loss, a cough that doesn't go, in, go away, pain that doesn't really seem to have a reason for it, um, blood in certain secretions, so like cough, urination, bowel, so things like that. Then we go to the physical examination. So this would be done by the clinician and this could involve just observation. So looking at the skin, for instance, the examination of different systems. So the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the neurological system, the gastrointestinal system, the urinary system, or even things like just vitals, so like blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. Then we have screening approaches. So this would be things that have been put into place for individuals that are high risk for cancer and screenings that could be done. So for instance, genetics, you could look at genetic profiles of individuals that the, the genes could increase the likelihood of predisposing the individual to cancer. So a good example there would be the BRCA gene for breast cancer. We could do certain bloods that would screen for possible cancers like leukemias. And we can also do tests like the bowel test that we see in Australia, which looks at blood within the stool. And then coming across here, imaging, Imaging is essentially looking inside the body by using different modalities. So we have radiation techniques, so that would be X-ray or CT. We have magnetic approaches, so this is an MRI. We can do it through sound waves, this would be an ultrasound. There's a unique one called a PET scan, which stands for a positive emission tomography, which essentially the in individual would consume a radioactive dye, commonly associated with glucose, and cells would take this on, and then we can look at the body and see which parts of the body maybe have cancer. And then we have endoscopy. Endoscopy is essentially um, scoping. So we could put a scope down into the stomach or a scope into the chest or the, the lungs that would be bronchoscopy or we can come up the other way through the colon and that would be a colonoscopy. And then finally, which is the most sensitive or the most definitive test that we would do for cancer is biopsy. And so biopsy is essentially where you remove a bit of suspicious tissue, you look under the microscope or the pathologist does, may put some stains on it to see if the tissue is cancerous, precancerous or not cancerous. The way we can get that tissue would be an excision biopsy, like removing a whole section of the skin if you wanted to diagnose skin cancer. Incision biopsy, so this, you could take a core or you could put a needle into the biopsy. Fluid, so you take out fluid from different compartments of the body. An example would be pleural fluid in the chest to maybe diagnose mesotheliomia, which is a cancer associated with asbestos. And then bone marrow, you can take a biopsy out of the bone marrow to look for certain blood cancers like leukemias or lymphomas. So that's the generic approach that's available to diagnose cancer. What we'll do now is we'll focus specifically on some of the most common types that we see in the developed world. So let's begin with lung cancer. So starting with patient history, an increase in age is a large risk factor for lung cancer. Basically, all individuals that are diagnosed with lung cancer, 75% of them would be over the age of 65. Social history, as you'd probably imagine, by far the largest risk factor for lung cancer is smoking. So a smoking history, and that is generally first-hand, but it can also be exposed to second-hand smoking. Symptoms associated with lung cancer would be a persistent cough, cough that produces blood, and also unexplained weight loss. Coming down to the physical examination, some things that could be observed by the clinician would be clubbing. So this is basically a convexity in the nail bed. So that would be clubbing. If a respiratory examination was done, so listening to lung sounds, the clinician may hear, for instance, wheezing on the lung sounds. And then an inspection for lymph nodes. 
So lymph nodes, um, it may, if the cancer has spread outside the lungs, it may involve lymph nodes, particularly in the neck. There aren't really any screening approaches to lung cancer, but if the clinician was concerned through this patient history and the physical examination, basically a CT or a X-ray will be performed looking for density in the lung fields. And if there is density, then basically we go for a biopsy. The biopsy could be done through an excision under endoscopy, which is bronchoscopy. So if it's a larger node, they would go down through a bronchoscopy and excise some of the that mass and then look for whether that's cancerous or not, or if it's out on the kind of peripheries of the lung fields, they may have to do a needle so they go through the transthoracic, so through the chest into the lung field. So they have to do that with a, under the CT and then they would take that biopsy and investigate. If it was positive for cancer, then they would probably explore again under these imaging modalities to see whether the cancer has spread elsewhere. So now with breast cancer, let's first have a look at patient history. So the greatest risk here would be the female sex. Um, in terms of age, again, we see an increase in age as a risk. So most individuals with breast cancer will be over the age of 55. And this is why screening would be done routinely over the age of 50. Positive family history is also a huge risk for developing breast cancer. Social history, Again, with smoking and drinking has an association with increasing the risk for cancer. Also, the, within the history, we see the reproductive history. So that would be things like um, it's a greater risk if um, the individual has not had children or an older age at menopause. And then finally, the most common symptoms that would be seen through self-examination would be a painless lump. Go into the physical examination. Again, we could do a breast observation. So this could be looking at the breast for a change in color, asymmetry, dimpling, or discharge from the nipple. As I said with screening, this would be a breast screen or over the age of 50 years for that individual, and that would be done through imaging. And we see that through X-ray, which is essentially the mammogram. If a density is shown, we do a biopsy, which is usually done through an incision core biopsy under the use of, again, imaging and that would remove the tissue for the biopsy and identify whether it is cancer. Alongside with the biopsy, certain staining techniques would be done to look at if the cancer is positive for estrogen, progesterone or HER2. And this would be important for the prognosis but also treatment. Lastly, let's look at bowel cancer. Coming across to patient history, again we see increase in age as a risk where the median age is 65 years of age and basically 75% of individual, individuals with bowel cancer will be over the age of 50. Medical history, so it could be a history of polyps or inflammatory bowel disease. Family history has a strong association. Symptoms, we would see changes in bowel habits. So this would be things like either diarrhea or constipation, blood in the stool, and social history of obesity. There's no real physical examinations that are done for diagnosing bowel cancer, but as I said, there is a good screening approach, at least done in Australia, and that's the bowel kit, which basically looks at blood within the stool of the individual, and this is done over the age, for individuals over the age of 50 years. Coming across now to imaging, the endoscopy, which would be done in the form of colonoscopy, particularly if the individual has high risks or have shown positivity in this bowel kit. So the colonoscopy would look for certain suspicious tissue, which would then be biopsied and um, the diagnosis would be made that way, usually through an excision or incision biopsy. And then if, if the diagnosis is made, they would look for spread, which could be done through MRI or CT of the, the pelvis. So that's a quick overview of the different approaches that we can take to diagnose cancer. It's important to note that not one test is used in the diagnostic process, but biopsy is the most sensitive and the most definitive approach to be used.